What's going on guys? Redpool Dead here with a little video on how to get your GR70 solo season 17 with the Demon Hunter Shadow Impale set. Okay, so first off, you can see my Paragon is 379 right here. And what if I ran GR70? For the first time, I was just under 300. I ended up hitting 300 during the rift. Kind of got to piece your gear together during the start of the season. You don't have all the parts that's okay i actually ran the gr70 with an obsidian ring of the zodiac rather than a convention of elements didn't even have the compass rose the jewelry slot for the cube was actually even empty so you don't have to have the perfect build in order to do gr70 um honestly as long as you have the six piece set carly's point and the uh, holy point shot you're probably going to be just fine okay we'll get into the gear real fast First thing you're going to need to get is this six piece set and what the six piece set does is when you have the two set pieces equipped together and you have a melee weapon your damage is increased by six thousand percent that means all the damage any damage you deal is increased by six thousand percent now whenever you get the four piece set um, the shadow power gains every rune and lasts forever and your last your six piece set impale deals an additional seventy five thousand percent weapon damage to the first enemy hit that's insane with the holy point shot you're going to be throwing three daggers at once and with your carly's point the damage of impale is increased by up to 375 percent and it returns 15 hatred and if an enemy has already been impaled so that means if you don't kill him on the first hit and you throw again then you get some hatred back so that's pretty nice now with your belt you're gonna want chain of shadows it synergizes very well with the impale build it's definitely made for this whenever you cast impale for two seconds vaulting costs nothing it doesn't cost any discipline at all that's really nice to have now strong arm braces are really good uh, whenever you knock back an enemy uh, they suffer up to 30 percent increased damage for six seconds now the next set you're going to be using is the endless walk set and the endless walk says composed of an amulet called the traveler's pledge and a ring called the compass rose effectively what this does is while you're moving damage is reduced up to 50 percent but while you're standing still your damage dealt is increased by 100 percent so you get a nice mitigation whenever you're moving around and whenever you're standing still you deal more damage all right the next important part is kiana's cube uh, the first thing you're going to need is Dawn. That's a staple in every Demon Hunter build pretty much ever. Next, you're going to use the Akila Curious. This is a chess piece that you can get. And while you're above 90% resource, all damage taken is reduced by 50%. Now, the Elusive Ring. This, this one is probably one of the more important ones. So after casting Shadow Power, Smokescreen, or Vault, which you'll be casting Vault pretty much all over the Rift, uh, you're going to take 60% reduced damage for 8 seconds. Uh, skills you're going to need. You're going to need Companion. Preferably the Wolf Companion. Granting you and your allies within 60 yards 15% increased damage for 10 seconds. You're going to be running Impale. I mean this is a Shadow Impale build so you got to be running Impale right? Uh, you're going to pick Ricochet. Ricochet is really good. It's a lightning damage. And basically what it does is whenever you hit an enemy... The knife will ricochet to two additional nearby enemies within 20 yards or you can run impale over penetration that is the cold variant of this skill uh, the knife pierces through all enemies in a straight line for cold damage next you're going to be using vault and you're going to use rattling roll a lot of people want to use tumble and it's good because it reduces the discipline costs if you use it but we're going to like i said we're going to be running chain of shadows so Basically, Vault is not going to cost anything anyway, so whenever you Vault through enemies, they are knocked away and stunned for one and a half seconds. Uh, the next skill you're going to be using is Phantom Knives, and you're going to pick the Bladed Armor Rune. Basically, you gain 40% additional armor for 6 seconds, and the cooldown is only about 10 seconds, so 60% of the time you can run this. So you're going to throw knives out around you, dealing 620% weapon damage to all enemies within 20 yards. Next one, super important, Shadow Power. Draw on the power of the shadows, gaining X amount of life per hit for 5 seconds. Uh, life per hit gain is increased by 25% of your life per kill. Whenever you have the 4 pieces of shadows mantle equipped, you're going to get all of these anyway. So we'll read through these. Nightbane, 
Slow the movement speed of enemies within 30 yards by 80% for 5 seconds. Uh, double the amount of life per hit gained. Reduce the cost to 8 discipline. Uh, reduce damage taken by 35% while shadow power is active. And gain 30% increased movement speed while shadow power is active. Next one. Vengeance. You gotta have that vengeance and that's why we have Dawn in the cube. For 20 seconds, shoot little cannons, some homing rockets, and you your increased damage. For lower difficulties, it's nice to use Seethe because you gain 10 hatred per second. On the lower levels, you're going to be hitting enemies probably one time and killing them, so you're not going to get the opportunity for your Impale to restore the hatred. But if you're running lower stuff, I suggest using Vengeance Seethe rather than a Dark Heart. But if you're running high rifts, you're going to want to use Vengeance dark heart uh, fills your heart reducing damage taken by 50 percent you're going to be running awareness uh you got to have that cheat death it, you know it's just kind of one of those things it kind of stinks but you have to have a cheat death with every build or else you're going to die a lot you're going to be using coal of the week uh, it increases damage against slowed or chilled enemies by 20 percent. so that's pretty much 20 percent extra damage all the time uh, numbing traps enemies use slow chill or hit with fan of knives uh, have their damage reduced by 25% for 5 seconds. Uh, but the big daddy here is Ambush. You deal 40% additional damage to enemies above 75% health. Basically, this is going to make it to where you one-shot everybody. We're going to go over some stat priorities here. For the Helm, you're going to want Dexterity, Crit Hit Chance, a Socket, Impale Damage, and Vitality. Uh, shoulders, you want Dexterity, Vitality, cooldown reduction, area damage. Torso, you want dexterity, vitality, three sockets, elite damage reduction, and all resistance. On the strong arm bracers, you're gonna want dexterity, crit chance, damage percent, so lightning, cold, if you're doing the cold variant, and vitality. The belt, you're gonna want dexterity, vitality, all res, life percent, freeze on hit as a secondary stat, maybe if you can get it. Legs, you're gonna want dexterity, the two sockets, all resistance, and vitality. The feet, you're going to dexterity, impale percent, vitality, and all resistance. On your compass rose, the ring, you're going to want a socket. You got to have a socket on all your jewelry. That's just a fact of life. You have to have a socket. You want to run those legendary gems, you got to have a socket. Crit damage, crit hit, cooldown reduction. And then if you can get a damage roll on there, that'd be preferable as well. Now you can use whatever rolls better. Um, I have the elusive ring in the cube, so I'm wearing the convention of elements. On your other ring, you're going to want a socket, crit damage, crit chance, cooldown reduction, and another damage roll if you can. On your amulet, you're going to want a socket, crit damage, crit hit chance, and if you can roll damage type on your weapon, you want a socket, but you don't want to roll it with the mystic. You want to roll a socket from the Rimaldi's gift. You're going to want a high damage range. You got to have dexterity, damage percent, and attack speed. Now on your holy point shot, you're going to want dexterity, crit chance, you want your elemental damage type, you want attack speed and impale damage. Now we're going to go over the legendary gems. Like I said, you have to have a socket in each piece of jewelry in order to run legendary gems. Always, always, always Bane of the Trapped. It increases damage against enemies under the effects of control and pairing effects by X amount. This is pretty much every enemy in the game whenever you come in contact with them. So you pretty much always want to use this. And once you hit 25, you get a little aura that reduces the movement speed of enemies within 15 yards by 30%. So just being close to them will proc this. Uh, the next one that's really good to have is the Goguk of Swiftness. It's really good. It stacks up to 15 times um, attack speed. And you get a little dodge out of that too. Um, not too worried about the dodge, but the attack speed is nice to have. You get an extra 15% with this. Um, once you hit rank 25 with this, you gain 1% cooldown reduction per stack, so up to 15% cooldown reduction, which is really nice. Now, if you're running lower greater rifts, or typically you'll use uh, multi-shot for farming, but if you're running lower GRs, you want to use Bane of the Powerful, gives you a little boost. Uh, but if you're running higher GRs, you're going to want to use Pain Enhancer. Basically, this allows you to hit enemies, not kill them, and then it deals damage over time. Uh, so you're going to be hitting enemies all over the place. Your ricochet is going to be going crazy. Critical hits cause enemies to bleed for 2,500% weapon damage as physical over 3 seconds. And then once you get this up to 25, you gain a blood frenzy, granting you 3% increased attack speed 
for each bleeding enemy within 20 yards just to throw in there you want pretty much emeralds in every slot uh you can put quite a diamond or a topaz in here depending if you need cooldown reduction or resource cost reduction uh, typically I like to use cooldown because I like my vengeance to come back sooner on your weapon Always put an emerald in here no matter what you don't want to put anything as unless you're doing a support Character then you might use something else All right guys that kind of wraps up my quick little build. This is kind of a first for me. This build is out there There's tons of different guides on it uh, I'm just trying to kind of wedge myself in there trying to make myself relevant. So if you can please like and subscribe uh, there's going to be more builds coming we're trying to stream every day if we can um, more than likely it's going to be three or four days a week but come over to twitch ask your questions we'll have a good time thanks for hanging out guys really appreciate it and we'll catch you later peace out I need to write a script before I do this stuff.